After the previous day on Potash Road and Schaefer Trail, we woke up in Moab prepared again to get out of the road as soon as we could, which was around 6 a.m. to try and mitigate some of the incoming heat for the day. Today's route isn't what the original plan was. Due to the heat wave that had come through the region, we had to make changes to the route to avoid the 45 to 50 Celsius days. This was a bit of a disappointment as the original plan was getting down to Zion National Park and the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Even your best laid plans can be upended by something totally out of your control. With the heat of the previous day, we didn't make it out to Arches National Park, so that would be our first stop in the morning. Now on the way out of Moab, Victoria, Utah. The park is located a mere 10 minutes north of Moab on Highway 191. Driving at Archers before the reservation system started was going to be the only way we'd make it through the park this day. Thankfully that wasn't an issue and the traffic was quite minimal at that time in the morning. The park covers a vast area of around 76,000 acres. Starting as a national monument in 1929 and becoming a national park in 1971, it's famous for its striking red rock formations. These formations include over 2,000 natural sandstone arches, spires, and balanced rocks, which were formed over millions of years due to the movement and erosion of an underground salt bed. The iron oxide in the rocks gives them a distinctive red color, creating a stunning and unique landscape that draws visitors from all over the globe. The landscape throughout this area is like nothing I've ever seen. Roads through the park are single lane with a reasonable number of pullouts and parking lots at some of the main hiking locations. The speed limit, it floats between 35 and 45 miles per hour. the park is stunning. The views of all the red rock formations are breathtaking, even just passing by them. Coming through in the morning gave us some unique views at sunrise. The roads are smooth and clean, and a great gentle cruise on the bike.
plan was to ride through the park to the northernmost area, known as the Devil's Garden. At this point, Bob was wanting to hike to the landscape arch while I stayed with the bikes and the gear. I wasn't quite dressed to be doing hikes, so this just made sense. Leaving Arches National Park, we started heading north to deal with some of the highway travel we knew we would have to cover to get to Tory. A quick stop for fuel, and we started what felt like a long ride through a whole lot of open empty space. one stretch of Highway 24 from I-70 to Hanksville, which in reality was only 40 minutes, but I could have sworn it was hours. There was nothing to be seen, no buildings, no cars, no people, not even livestock. It was barren. west from Hanksville and worked their way towards Torrey. Stopping in Capitol Reef National Park was a little bit of a disappointment. The main road was closed less than a mile into the park for construction, which meant we would be unable to have a good look Really though, with the heat increasing, this wasn't the worst thing to happen. 